This is the Open Source Response Time Tool, or OSRTT for short. It's primarily a monitor response time tester, although you can do input latency testing with it too. It's now in the hands of a pretty crazy number of reviewers, companies, and enthusiasts around the world. People like Linus, like KitGuru, Tech Tester, CNN Underscore, New York Times Wirecutter, and so, so many more. I'm honestly blown away with the, the reception to this, and I'm incredibly happy to see it being put to good use literally the world over. Since the videos that I've done thus far have been a bit spread out, I thought it would be a good idea to do a more condensed, hopefully easy to understand video to give you a rough idea of what this thing is all about. First off, it's literally in the name. Response times. Monitor response times are definitely a complicated concept, especially to someone who doesn't have an in-depth knowledge of how liquid crystal displays actually work. In short, what we measure here is how fast a, a panel, a monitor, can change colors. Well, actually, specifically changing brightness, not really the color, although that's somewhat inherent to the science, as it were. The faster the change, the more sharp and accurate the image on screen will look. Too slow, and you get what's called ghosting, where a previous frame is still on screen at the same time as the current one, whereas conversely, if you drive the pixels too hard, that can cause them to overshoot, to have them go to uh, you know, push too much or too little light through for a, a short period of time, it's extending the time it takes to visibly see the frame stabilize. The way you measure response times is you capture how much light is being emitted over a transition. In my case, actually over 30 of them. You can then plot those results on a heat map table like these ones, to see how good or bad a panel is at changing its brightness and therefore its colors. To actually measure those figures though, for a number of reasons that you can check out in the much more detailed video in the cards above, you want to use a reasonable tolerance level, effectively trimming off some of the, the, the transition, the, the graph here. I personally use and recommend using an RGB5 tolerance, although there are plenty of other valid options to use there too. In this case, the light sensor, a Malexus MLX75305, turns the light input into a voltage output that the microcontroller on board captures and sends to the desktop program to be processed. It will run the test multiple times and average those down, including rejecting any outlier results, then load up the results viewer to show you the, the relevant heat maps just like this. If you want to check out the raw data in graph form too, and see where it thinks the transitions start and end, you can hit the raw data graphs button and see all of that there. It's a fully interactive graph, so you can feel free to, to zoom in or even manually measure anything by just dragging the edges of the block around. One important thing to note is that the program saves all of the raw and processed data to a folder per test. This is so that you can easily refer back to that data in future uh, and even reprocess any of the data with any different methodology that you might like. This is part of the, the openness that I really like about the tool. Everything is open source and freely available. Nothing is hidden away, not even the data itself. On the flip side, input lag is equally possible to test with this. It's less sort of natively suited for it, but it does work just fine. I've even built a dedicated mode just for it, and I'll be releasing a pretty major update just to test the input lag pretty soon. But first, it's worth knowing what input lag actually is and what it isn't. Input lag, when talking about a monitor in particular, is generally the on-display latency, as in the time from a new frame arriving at the input to it being displayed on screen. But a load of you might know it a bit differently, though, specifically as the click-to-photon or total system latency the more real-world measurements. 
The trouble with that though, is that while it is more real world, it's a little too real world. Because it relies on the specific system that's used for testing, also what game, and even things like what settings are used. It's not an overly useful metric for reviewers to, well, just quote willy-nilly without context. For example, leaving VSync enabled can add two or three frames worth of latency thanks to double or triple buffering. With enough information, specifically how long the USB polling delay is and the frame render time, you can know how long the display then took to actually process that image, which is what I'm working on with a new feature update for OSRTT. A few people have asked if I'll be implementing NVIDIA LDAT style in-game testing, and for the time being, unfortunately the answer is no. I'm only one person, not only running this you know, tech YouTube channel, but a second one dedicated to car videos, a global link building platform, and doing literally everything to do with OSRTT from hand soldering the PCBs together to 3D printing the cases to writing all of the code for all of the, the, the whole project. Uh, all I should also mention while being mentally and physically broken. Um, so I'm afraid that that's just not something that I can, I can do right now. Although it's not something that I'm against at all and in due time I would very much like to make that happen. It's just not, not something I can do right now. And that note also extends to any bugs you may find or run into uh, or the delay between ordering a unit and actually getting it shipped to you. Not only am I hand building the units themselves, but I'm hand wrapping each of them, printing the shipping labels at home on my home printer, uh, the, the whole thing. So please bear with me as I, I get it going. Uh, I'm not a, a company, there is no support staff, it's just me. Uh, with that said, if you do want to pick up an OSRTT unit for yourself, for your company, I've built a store page uh, just for that. It's osrtt.com, so head there and pick one up. You can also leave your email address uh, to be kept up to date with the, the project. Uh, trust me, I will not be sharing your email with anybody. Uh, and you can also trust me in saying that uh, I will not be sending you a barrage of emails. Uh, anyone who has emailed me thus far knows that I'm actually terrible at sending anything, so you don't have to worry there. With that said, uh, something on the horizon that I'm incredibly excited uh, to, to share is going to be a really useful tool for anyone looking to, to buy a monitor, so definitely stay tuned for that. So that's pretty much... Oh, uh, actually, there is one more thing. Meet OSRTT Pro. This is very much still in development, so don't expect this for a little while yet, but believe me when I say that this is a massive upgrade in terms of usability and features. The standard OSRTT model is limited to around 160 nits or so of peak brightness, and you pretty much have to hit that, whereas the Pro can range from anywhere between about 80 nits comfortably to Honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, my napkin math says that it should be over 2000 nits, so let's just say that it's plenty. Uh, it's also much more accurate and faster to respond, uh, which means that it's even better for testing things like OLEDs and mini LED panels. Oh, and it even has its own OLED built in too, because why not? So again, sign up to the uh, be notified of this, uh, when this beast is available, and that's on osrtt.com. So it's safe to say that I'm incredibly excited for where the, the project is heading. I do have a lot more sort of up my sleeve here, so do stay tuned. Like I said, if you want to be notified of the, the updates to the project, then do leave your email on osrtt.com, or if you want to pick one of the uh, standard units up, feel free to head over there as well. If you want to be notified of just general new videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to support this project, support me, maybe you don't necessarily want an OSRTT unit, but you want to, well, 
uh, save some of my sanity, not that I really have any left, uh, you can uh, do so in a load of different ways. There is obviously the YouTube join button where you get some cool rewards as well as supporting me uh, and become a YouTube member. You could support on Patreon instead if you'd rather. There's also uh, direct links if you fancy. There's uh, affiliate links to places like Amazon and Overclock UK if you're buying from there, feel free. And there's even merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one and a load of other things that I designed myself as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Do check out the rest of the OSRTT series, which includes uh, explaining all about the different response time and input lag testing methodologies and stuff like that. And yeah, that's kind of it really. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.